Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, uh, never I heard, heard no horse <laughs> Sandy Riley, and this is Ralph Litwin, our longtime host and co-producer of this show. I am the other co-producer. Uh, we are in our first production in a brand new studio facility. Um, I would like to thank uh, the Folk Project for helping supply us with some spec spectacular equipment so that we could continue our show, um, and Mendham TV, which has provided the studio space for us. Um, it was a little bit of a long transition, but um, we're very ha happy in our new home. And um, Ralph, tell us a little bit about that uh, song you just played. That was a song composed by Joseph Morley, the turn of the century, the late, late, late 1800s. 
by the unfortunate name of N-word town. Uh, I guess that is an unfortunate word. <laughs> That's a great tune, but unfortunate title. Yeah, unfortunate title. And it's it was a somewhat messed up version of it that I bungled sufficiently. It was, it was the best version of it I ever heard. <laughs> so maybe the only version I ever heard, but uh, quite nice. Um, so um, we're here. Um, a little bit of growing pains, not so painful, um, but um, this show has been in production for how long? For almost 35 Since years? 1989. 1989. That was the first. It's amazing. Now, I remember when I came in, I remember seeing you play and perform at the Minstrel, and I was just awed uh, with your um, musicality and with, I, I just... You made me laugh, you made me smile. The songs that you were doing were just fun. And I remember I dropped one of my cards in your, um, and a donation, I'm sure, in your donation bucket. And, um, you know, to say I really liked what you had. And you gave me a call, invited me to the studio, and kind of like history. I started on, I think, camera, and I've done every single job in the um, in this studio. and progressed to directing and teaching basically all of our staff here. And um, it's been a really long, fun haul. And that was, I believe that was in um, 2002. And um, I've been part of the show uh, ever since. So that means I've been here 16 years. Wow. So. And I'm very thankful for your particip participation. Oh, I, I think it so would have gone under without your help. I, Thank you. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate you inviting me, and um, I, I think somebody else might have picked up the helm, but um, it's a lot of work to do, and, and you still you do so much. Um, but anyway, we've got a great staff. Um, yes, we do. We, we really do. And um, I mean, I, I'd say everybody's names, but there's so many people that aren't even here. Um, so read all the names in the credits from everybody that's here today and um, hopefully check us out and um, we're looking for a long continuing process. So you want to share something else with us? You want to tell us something else about the history of the show? Oh, I don't think I want to get into that. Okay. So um, basically, if you haven't seen us on um, YouTube, we have a YouTube channel where we have a, how many shows uploaded now? I don't know, maybe four or five hundred. Four or five hundred. So it'll keep you busy for a little while. <laughs> so, yeah. ready to play another tune for us? Sure. Okay, let's do it. This is a uh, a cowboy song. I heard recorded on two different, two, two different versions on cowboy song albums, and I combined the two because they were slightly different. It's an anonymous tune called The Galdern Wheel, and it's about a cowboy's unfortunate first meeting with a, one of those old-fashioned bicycles with a big wheel in the front. Penny Farthing. Penny farthing. Penny farthing. That's what they call them. No kidding. No I kidding. Know that. Well, I'm a, I'm I'm a cycling coach. I need to know that. <laughs> so, cool. There, there were imagine or bone shakers. They used to call them too. Um, imagine doing a hundred mile race on one of those or riding them across the country. There are people today um, that still do that. I won't question their sanity, but you know, <laughs> I wouldn't do it across the country from one side to the other on a penny farthing. Well, how appropriate that I chose this song about a bicycle That's to do awesome. with you. <laughs> I didn't know it was about the bicycle. I knew that you know you were talking about the wheel, but I didn't quite. Okay, good. I'm glad I explained that. I'm glad you did. <laughs> now I have a, Now I have a vested interest in the song. Yeah, so this is about how the cowboy's unfortunate first meeting with a bicycle. Okay. All right. You gonna help me with it? Sure. I'll, I'll probably drop out on the guitar playing. That's fine. Get me started and I'll see if I can keep it up. Because Parkinson's has the best of me my abilities.
Okay. I can't make the words for that. Okay. I can ride the wildest bronco in the wild and woolly west. I can rake him, I can break him, let him do his level best. I can handle any curly wall of coat of hair. And I've had a lively tussle with an enormous grizzly bear. I can rope and throw a longhorn of the wildest Texas brand. And in any disagreement, I can take a win in hand. But if I found out my master, he really made me squeal when the boys got me a straddle of that god darn wheel. Was a tenderfoot who brought it, he came wheeling all the way from this land of freedom out to Fran San Francisco Bay. Left it at the bunkhouse to get on the outside of a meal. Never dreaming of this cowboy who'd monkey with his wheel. Old Arizona's in the gun, and he said to Jack McGill, but I was a pickup cowboy for him, way too much upon my riding skill. They said I'd find myself against a different kind of deal if I would get a straddle of that god darn wheel. Well, such a slam against my cow made me madder than a mink, and I told him I could ride it for amusement or for chink. Because it was just a plaything for the kids and such about. They'd have their ideas shattered if they'd trot the critter out. Well, they held it while I mounted and I give the word to go. The shove they gave to start me weren't unreasonably slow. And I never spilled a cuss word and I never give a squeal. Because I was building my reputation on that god darn wheel. Now the grade was mighty sloping from the ranch down to the creek. And I went to Galifootin' like a crazy lightning streak. A whizzing and a darting first this way, then and that. And the dirty contrivance wobbling like the flying of a bat. And the boys begin to holler, stay with him, Uncle Bill, stick your spurs into the critter and turn him over up the hill. And as the boys were hollering and down the hill I went, it seemed there'd be a mix up that I couldn't circumvent. As I pulled up on the handles and I couldn't check it up. I yanked it sudden and hollered, but the darn thing wouldn't stop. And a sneaking notion in my brain began to steal that the devil had a mortgage on that god darn wheel. Then the ground flew up to hit me and the stars all tangled up. The last thing I remember when the punchers picked me up, took me down across the bunkhouse and Cowboys gathered around because they knew that I was dead. And Jesus jousted with his prophets how he'd split the Texas air. He said he hadn't laughed so hard in about a hundred years. And if I'd stick the critters and don't tear up this Texas star, he'd send me back to earth here by the grace of God. Yeah, I have a sort of dim and hazy recollection of the stop with the stars all spinning round and the earth all tangled up. There followed an intermission after which I found I was lying in a bunkhouse and the boys all gathered round. And a doctor there was sewing on the skin where it was ripped. And old Arizona whispered, well, oh boy, I guess you're whipped. I said that I'm busted from Sobrera down the hill. And he grinned and said, you ought to see that god darn wheel. Wow. That was great. That was really great. I'm so glad you explained it to me. I was so caught up with, you know, just playing it before that um, I wasn't really listening to the words. Now, I don't want to give that music, that song to any of my students that I'm teaching, <laughs> but um, that is a great song. So you you put that together? That's your song? No, it's a traditional, a traditional? song. Traditional? Okay. But I heard it from two different sources, and I combined it, made up a couple words that seem to be missing from the audio track that I was working from. Right. Especially I remember how having to fill in Jesus Joseph with his prophets, how he'd split the Texas era, and I filled in, and he said you laugh, haven't laughed so hard in a hundred years. That was good. I like that. I figured that fit in the genre. Right. <laughs> I love it. It's really great. Thanks for playing that. Yeah. Very cool. It's a good old song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, one of our uh, 
one of our occasional hosts, Tommy, was going to be able to, we planned to have him come and host. So he wasn't able to make it. So I pulled out my guitar and sat with Ralph just a little while ago and tried to pick this out. And wow, I'm glad you, I'm, thank you so much for inviting me to do that with you. That was fun. My pleasure. So. Shall we roll into another song, or you want to talk a little bit more about the show? Well, let me talk a little bit about the Folk Project. So um, the Folk Project is the organization that, um, that we are under their umbrella. You'll see a little information about it, but they also um, generously provided this equipment so that we could keep this great show going for all of you. Um, it has regular concerts every Friday night in Morristown, New Jersey. Um, it supports a um, swing and turn dance um, twice a month. We have evenings of music for members. Um, we do festivals, television show. Um, there's so many things available, and it's such a rich, rich opportunity for people to perform, people to learn mu how to um play music, uh, uh, very supportive, but it also um, is a great place to go and listen and enjoy and be part of the arts. Um, right in Morristown, um, New Jersey, look us up, folkproject.org. Um, we also link and partnership and, yeah, there you go, and um, work with numerous other local organizations. And um, so. Anyway. So it was good to, it, it's great to be in this new space. Um, we've worked hard to get it painted and, and um, cleaned up. And, and, um, but I think this is going to be a great little place for us to work. So. And what else are you going to play for us? I think I'm going to do Grandpa Emil. Grandpa Emil, very good. This is a song about my grandpa who I never knew. But I heard lots of stories about him as a kid and growing up and he was quite a character. Grandpa Emil trained his dogs to go coon hunting. He had a little room just for canary birds. He taught them songs to sing with a special whistle. He had a hand-me-down parrot but all we say was Shut the door, Goldberg. One summer day, he took the family driving. The, the car overheated, it didn't get him down. He just pulled down his zipper and peed in the radiator. It was just enough to get him back to town. Grandpa was full of piss and vinegar. And though during my life he wasn't physically around Whenever I think of him, emotions begin to stir Grandpa ain't on the fighting Jew of Morristown I'm very proud of that rhyming vinegar with would begin to stir uh, that's, that's quite awesome, yeah <laughs> He was proud of his dad who wrote commentaries on the Torah. He was the brightest scholar in that Russian town. He was published in four volumes and as tradition dictated, he married the daughter of the richest man around. And did my mother's cousin Sidney at the wedding of his son had a couple too many and it loosened up his tongue. Grand, your grandpa used to take me out coon hunting late at night, though my mom didn't like it, and we stayed out till the way past one. And did you ever hear the story how he walked into a bar and a big man said, buy me a drink, you cheap Jew? Your grandpa said, what did you call me? And the man repeated it with a single punch onto the floor. That big man flew. Grandpa was full of piss and vinegar. And though during my life he wasn't physically around, whenever I think of him, emotions begin to stir. For Grandpa Emil, the fighting Jew of Morristown. 
My cabinet shop was in his old horse stall. Three bays cement block with a wood frame roof. One day, Tyler, my backyard neighbor, came over to tell some tales about Grandpa and his friends of feather, fur, and hoof. Right there was the dog pen, there one for raccoons, there for pigeons that tumbled in the air. They'd fold their wings and tumble down and come close to the ground, swoop on out of it as close as they dare. And all us kids in the neighborhood, we loved him. He'd pay us to work in the garden over there. And the horses that he had were Blackie and Sierra Sue. And Martinet was a chestnut mare. This next story I've heard from several different people. To be buried face down would be his wish when he would pass. Why is that they'd ask him? It ain't no mystery. It's so my creditors can all kiss my ass. If he's looking down, I hope he's proud. His grandpa took no guff and neither do I. And though I doubt you'll find me engaged in fisticuffs, I feel close to grandpa, I ain't gonna tell you why. Grandpa was full of piss and vinegar. Though during my life he wasn't physically around Whenever I think of him The emotions begin to stir For Grandpa ain't all the fighting Jew of Morristown <laughs> Thank you That's very rich, Ralph um, That's really the folk tradi tradition um, he's taken a song, a stories of his grandfather. I mean, it was really cool because I loved your line that was um, feathers, fur, and hooves. And I'd, I've been to your studio. I've been to your, uh, now I know it's your grandfather's formal stable. Former stable. And that really puts a, a, a note on that historical account. Um, really cool. I love it. I, I'd, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So, although, you know, I'm glad he cooled down his car, but I would have chosen <laughs> another method. But, you know, hey, that's, I love the song. It's really good. You know. I, um, used, I used to introduce it with a, a story about my quasi-uncle, Ezra, who advised me on my draft status when I was number 14 in the lottery. And I wanted to drop out of school. And I went in there with my bare feet and my love beads and my long hair and my beard. And he says to me, he talked in a gravelly voice like this. He says, Ralph, I don't know whether you're a prophet or a loss. <laughs> That was nice. <laughs> well, I think we've all profited from you, Ralph. Really. Go ahead, go on. I was scared of him until he did that to me. Really? Until he told me that joke. Really? He was such a gruff lawyer. And I really came to appreciate him after that. It sounds like you're from a very long line of people with great senses of humor. Truly. So, your music. Um, I really loved your ragtime that I was listening to, and, and um, I have to say that you kind of exposed me to stuff that I had never been a part of. Um, I kind of made my way into folk by way of Led Zeppelin, and um, and Jethro Tull, which is really folky, by the way, in certain methods, but but um, the exposure to the ragtime, the old-time music, um, you were the one that brought me into that. And what was your influences? Oh, I started out listening to, uh, to the radio on the, in the car, Ray Charles and the... The whole 
pop scene. You know? Pop Motown. Motown, yeah. yeah. And then I got exposed to Pete Seeger and Sonny Terry and Brian McGee. The, the Reavers. And uh, I. I also got into the Jim Kweskin Jug Band. And from there, I just listened to everybody that I could. I loved a couple of the combinations that you had and, and with groups. And I loved your band of thousand names. And uh, I just thought that was really creative. <laughs> I guess. You know, it was also very, uh, very telling of what you had. Um, okay, so they're telling us we only have three minutes left. I can't believe it's gone so fast. Um, I, I, I think we almost should do this every week because I've truly enjoyed my time with you, Ralph. Um, and I've appreciated getting to know your grandfather and your uncle a little bit. And um, I hope that if we have new, um, new listeners, new viewers, um, that you look into our show if you are getting this on YouTube, talk to your local TV station because we can be broadcast in your area bringing um, music and ideas uh, to your local viewing stations. So um, all you have to do is contact us um, by way of HSNLI at, or, uh, at folkproject.org um, or just look up folkproject.org. All the information is on there. You can contact us, and we can, with your help, get this show in your local, um, local market and your public access stations. Thanks so much for watching. What do you got for us, Ralph? Oh, Groundhog. Oh, Groundhog. You start us off and see what I can do. The gun on dog. You get the gun on whistle up the dog. We're gonna go and shoot groundhog, groundhog. Here comes Sally with a ten foot pole. Here comes Sally with a ten foot pole. Gonna twist that groundhog out of his hole, groundhog. Snigger and a grin, got a groundhog grease all over her chin, groundhog. Eat the meat and tan the hide, eat the meat and tan the hide. Best shoelaces you ever had tied, but groundhog.